I'd like to speak on the subject of Tonglen. I'd like to begin right away by reviewing the technique that was taught to uh, the students of Trumper Rinpoche, that he taught to uh, his students. And this is the form of Tonglen that, we, that I have always taught and that is taught here at Gampo Abbey. And I make this preface because there is actually, uh, even though the essence of Tonglen is always the same, there's many different ways of teaching it, slightly different versions, some of which I'm going to present. So the technique is said to have four stages, and sometimes it's thought of as three stages, with the third part having like two parts, just to make it more Buddhist. <laughs> and the third part of the fourth part has six parts. <laughs> no, not really. I'm just kidding. <laughs> so the first is taught as just touching in with stillness or openness of mind. Just touching in. And the way Trumper Rinpoche used to express that is just a flash of absolute bodhicitta. Now, often when that is taught and that instruction is given, people really don't have a sense of, at all of what that might mean. So Rinpoche suggested that when we're doing formal meditation, that we listen to the gong as a way of just looking straight ahead, and just listen to the gong at the beginning of the Tonglen as a way of just resting your mind, some kind of openness and stillness. So if you would all just sit up and look straight ahead and just listen to the sound of the gong as if this were the beginning of your Tonglen practice. You've been meditating. Maybe there's already some openness. Maybe the gong shocks you into some openness out of your fantasy world. But in any case, seize that sort of moment and look straight out and uh, listen to the sound of the gong almost until it's gone. And when it begins to die out, then begin breathing in the quality or texture of claustrophobia, usually described as dark, thick, and heavy. Sometimes also say hot. Breathing it in. Breathing out the texture or quality of spaciousness, clear, light, fresh. So one breathes in, claustrophobia in this form of a visualization, and one can breathe that into your whole body, taking it into your whole body, or one can breathe it into the heart, sense of this constant, more concentrated, claustrophobic, dark, hot, heavy, thick, breathing it into the heart or the whole body, either way. But in either case, when you breathe in, there's a sense of opening. Sometimes the image is used of the heart widening, uh, getting very, very large so that you could take in any amount of claustrophobia because you just expand as much as you can. So in a way, it's an exercise of opening the heart to what we usually want to push away. So visualizing the dark, heavy, hot coming in, visualizing clear, white, cool, refreshing going out. It's a very thorough sending out, like sending it out from all the pores of your body, radiating it out. And during this stage, your eyes can be open or closed. The uh, Lojong slogan is to practice taking and sending 
on the medium of the breath. So that's to say you synchronize this with your breath. Your breath coming in brings in the heavy, hot claustrophobia. Breath going out radiates out clear, light, bright, refreshing. And you just do this for a while, breathing in and out until it feels synchronized with the breath, doing this visualization. Also, the breath can be manipulated. You can breathe in very deeply and send out very fully. But always give the in-breath and the out-breath equal time. That's important. So you do that for a while. There's no like designated time, but until it feels synchronized. And uh, then you move on to what is considered the main part of the practice. And here you use a specific object. The other day I suggested that people do Tonglen for their mother. So it would go like this. Breathing in, you take away from your mother anything that you feel. And your mother can have already died. That's all right. It doesn't really matter. Just to have a visualization or hold the face or the name of your mother taking away from her, breathing in from her, anything that you feel used to cause her distress or currently causes her distress. And sending out relief in whatever form you you wish. Which is to say, sometimes people say the word compassion or the word strength or the word... uh, happiness or something like this contentment and it means something to them it's not just abstract that word has uh, emotional meaning but other times that people find words too uh, abstract and so instead they'll they will send something that they feel their mother would really that would make their mother happy such as beautiful flowers or a lovely day or a anything really. But the idea is to send something that would produce well-being and let your mother be happy and relaxed and free of suffering. So the in-breath really is the compassion breath. You're you're wishing your mother to be free of suffering. The out-breath is the loving-kindness breath. You're wishing her to be happy and and, uh, at ease. So in this main part of Tonglen, no matter who you're doing it for, it's always, you always try to have it be as real and personal as possible. Now I chose mother because in our culture, mother is often very loaded. And uh, so I, I, uh, I knew in a room this size, there might actually be very few who could really do it for their mother easily and with a good heart and uh, good will. And there would be a a larger number in a group in the West who would feel much more complicated, anything from confused and kind of ambiguous feelings to actual dislike, which even that could be maybe too gentle a word. So knowing that, I said... If in doing the practice for your mother, you find it blocked in some way by your genuine emotions, don't feel that you have failed. Instead, just shift the focus of the Tonglen and begin to do Tonglen with your feelings. So in other words, suppose you're feeling uh, fear or anger, irritation, resentment, anything like this. Breathe in that feeling. Breathe it in completely. I I personally like the idea of breathing it into the heart. That's how I usually do it and making the heart very large, but you can also just breathe it into your whole being. That feeling, breathe it in and then send out relief, whatever you feel is needed. But then we we come to the important next stage, which is considered the expansion stage. And this is either considered as a fourth stage, or I actually like to think of it as part of the third stage. It's almost simultaneous as doing it for yourself or doing it for your mother, and that is you expand. So, for instance, if you breathe in the troubled feelings that you're having and send out relief, 
then you start breathing in for all the people who are in this kind of conflicted relationship with their parents or loved ones and sending out relief to all of them so that your very personal experience that you're having right on the spot which you might feel ashamed of these feelings but instead of them being an obstacle they actually become the basis of maitri for yourself and compassion for other people in the same boat Likewise, if you're just simply doing it for your mother and it's a genuine open heart, you can feel the heart opening and you find it easy to do and actually rewarding to do, then as quite quickly you also do it for all the other mothers or all the other people that are in your mother's situation, maybe uh, that are very ill so, as your mother is or very, very depressed as your mother is or very maybe holding some kind of a grudge. We'll do it for all the other Jewish mothers. <laughs> <laughs>